QuickBooks Online 2023 projects. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switching the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it. Back to the tab to the middle as the one to the right is thinking reports on the left hand side. We want the balance sheet. As that's thinking we'll tab to the right. Reports on the left. This time we want the P&L, the profit and the loss. Let's close the hand boogie change the range we want april this time because in our practice problem or, or at least mine it'll be a clean report or fairly clean 040123 to 04323 and let's run that so there's something in it but it's kind of clean we're going to go to the tab to the middle close up the hand boogie and then scroll up top and go from 040123 to 04323 and run that one Let's go to the tab to the left. This time we're focused in on the projects. We've been looking at some of these kind of these added tools in an order that's chronological order when they were kind of support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it put in place within to the QuickBooks system. So for example, we've looked at in more detail in a prior presentation, the jobs, which QuickBooks Online then called sub customers. Then we went to the class tracking. Now we're going to the projects. Next time we'll go to location tracking and then we will go to the tags. However, if we think about these, these tools in terms of which are most similar to each other, the projects are most similar to the jobs, which QuickBooks Online calls the sub customers and the classes and the location tracking are most similar and the tags are more similar to the class and location tracking than to the projects and the jobs. All right, so we're on the projects. So when we think about the projects, we note that they're similar to the sub customers because they have to be tied to a customer. That's the general concept. So when, when a lot of people kind of think projects, a lot of things that might come into mind don't perfectly fit into the range of projects. So for example, if you're gonna have like an event, like a dinner that's gonna generate revenue and there's gonna be expenses related to the dinner or something like that, you might say that sounds like a project. I wanna be able to track the revenue and expenses to that event. But that doesn't exactly tie into the concept of projects because the project has to be tied to a customer. So in that kind of scenario, you might better be able to use the class tracking or the location tracking or the tags so that you can have an income statement by that particular event that happened. Because if you were trying to set up a project for that event, what would happen is if you go to the, to the new project here, you'd have to assign it to a customer. And obviously the event might have multiple customers that are paying customers within the event. So you can kind of finagle it to work in that scenario, but the, the actual projects tool looks to be something that's a ro more robust type of thing for job costing type of systems than what was previously used, which were the jobs and the sub customers. So that's generally where the projects shine to kind of take on in a more, uh, more robust way the stuff that was happening with the sub customers and the jobs. So in order to think about projects, we first really have to go to the, to the customers. So if I go to the customers tab, here's our customers closing up the hamburger. Last time we talked about setting up customers and the sub customers, as you can see in the customer field, 
Now we're going to set up customers and instead of using the sub customers, we will use the projects and the projects will allow us to tie income and expenses to the projects which are tied to the customer in a similar way as the sub customers. They will allow us to run reports in a similar way as with the sub customers. In other words, when I break this out, I'm going to be breaking it out by customers which will show which will show the customers and it would show the sub customers and it would show the projects if we had those in this particular time range as we will see going forward notice that's different than the tags the classes and the the location tracking because those give you this whole other field in here to search by classes so if I run by class, everything that got tagged with a class will now be populated in that format. So it's a, it's a different kind of concept because the projects are tied to a customer. Okay, so let's go to the tab to the left. Let's add some, some new customers, just customer four and five and put our projects just to those customers. So I'm gonna say we have a new customer and I'm just gonna say customer, customer number four and we will add that and then we'll say new customer uh hold on a sec back to my customers and then a new customer customer five save it now also i recall we touched on in a prior presentation that the sub customers don't necessarily go away if you're using projects because one you're only going to have access to projects if you're using pro or above, if you're using something under that in terms of pay price tiers, then you might still be able to utilize the sub customers in a similar way as we saw in the past. And sometimes you might want to collect, connect a sub customer to uh, a, a a a project to a sub customer, I, I should say. So you might want to have a sub customer and then connect the project to the sub customer, possibly for billing reasons. So they can kind of work together in some cases as well. All right, so there, so now we've got our customers set up. Let's go and set up a project. So I'm gonna go open this up, go to the projects. This is where it gets a little bit confusing because, because it has its own field over here, you might think that the projects aren't connected to the customers because you would think if they were, they would be in the customers area. However, the projects needs its own kind of location over here so it can have all the cool things that are related to the projects in and of itself so we've got the status tracking we had one project we set up before we've got the project uh, that is open in progress completed canceled this kind of terminology here is standard for like a job cost kind of system so th that's the kind of thing that the projects kind of fits into best although you might think of other uses for the projects and then you've got your customers all customers or you can pick a particular customer and the drop down uh employee rates and so then we've got our customers down below then up top i can say new project let's do that i'm going to have a new project let's say it's going to be i'm just going to generically name it project project number four and that's going to be related to customer number four. Note that I have to have a customer. That's why there's a little asterisk here. You can't set up a project without a customer because you're going to be running reports by customer in order to look at the projects generally. I'm going to pick a date, a starting date just at the beginning of the year. So it's make sure I have that. It's going to be in progress as the default or sometimes when you start the project, it might be not started. Uh, uh, at, at that point and then you go into the in progress and then when it's completed completed if the project isn't going forward cancel the project all right so we're going to say save it then it actually just goes into the project so you can see up top that it actually went into the next field if i want to go back to the to the intro field there's our project we had project one and now we have project number four so if we go into project number four now we can add most of the stuff that's related to the project from this field so in other words normally when we open invoices we go to this plus button and expenses over here 
now we've got another place that we can open those within the project which is actually kind of nice because it can help us to make sure that we're assigning the invoices and the expenses for example to the appropriate project as opposed to mistakenly doing it to the customer for example which could be an easy kind of mistake to make because the project's connected to the customer so you've got your little income summary up up top the profit margin up top open invoices overdue invoices and then you've got your tabs here this is your little income statement a nice quick overview of this particular project income minus costs there's your profit invoices expenses bills payroll uh, our information overview tab transactions tab so this is going to be the transactions related to this particular project kind of housed within here in a similar fashion as transactions related to customers are housed in the customer area time activity if we have any time activity applied and then we've got the project uh, reports and so these are the internal reports for the particular project that are tied to this particular project you can also go to reports and find like the overview summary report which gives you kind of an overview of all the projects and you can run the balance sheet on the income statement by customer that will break out the projects that are kind of related to the customers in a similar fashion as we saw with the sub customers which used to be called jobs and then you can have your attachments and stuff over here to add your attachments so the idea here being is that when we have these longer term jobs, we can kind of house everything into this window in a much more comprehensive type of way than with the sub customers. All right, so let's go back to the first tab and let's add you know, some common concepts here, some common forms. Oftentimes the project will start off with an estimate. So we might have an estimate that we're sending out for project number four, which is populated automatically now because I opened it from this project field. I'm gonna do it as of 040123. And let's say the estimate is, let's say hours, hours, uh, we'll just say 400. I'm not gonna add a class. And then we'll say that there's gonna be labor, let's say of 600. And then we're going to say that there's going to be materials of 10,000. And oftentimes note that, that when you're putting your, your estimate in here, I'm putting it into products and services. So these aren't going to the actual account. We're setting up these items that are the things that are going to be driving the income and expense accounts that will be impacted. When I make an estimate, it's just an estimate. It's not going to have any kind of uh, effect on the financial statements, but it's often the thing that you're going to start off with when you're trying to gauge with a client a long-term job and whether they're going to be moving forward with the job. So if I save it and close it, so then we have this. Nothing happened on the first pages here because there's no income or expenses. If I go to the transaction activity, we can see our estimate within the transaction activity. So then the next thing that might happen is we might, you know, start to get some expenses. Uh, before I go into it, just note, obviously most of the stuff on these forms are income or performance related items. So they're not really breaking out the balance sheet items within here. We're kind of focused in on the profit and loss, the income statement items. Okay, so let's say we're gonna go up top and add an expense form. Now note that I made the expense forms billable and I, I put a markup of 30%. Let's show you that real quick. If I go to the, tag, the cog and account and settings, and then we go to the expenses on the left-hand side, I've, I've got this marked off so I can make the, the expense items billable, meaning when I enter an expense, I'm gonna pull it into the invoice and then I'm gonna mark e up each line item by that 30 percent so i'm going to go ahead and say okay let's do it then add an expense and i'm going to make the expense just to a generic vendor vendor number two generic vendor i'm going to delete what i had in there before it's going to be four one okay and then note that when i add the expenses i could add them by account down here or i can add them by item 
It's a little bit easier to add them by account, but we have a little bit less control when we use that billable function to pull them into the invoice. So I'm gonna imagine we're starting a project and I have expenses related to it. Let's first just categorize those expenses. Cost of goods sold, labor, and I'm gonna say is uh, $100. And then we'll say cost of goods sold. I think I have materials here, materials or something. Supplies and materials, okay. Let's do $50. And so there we have it. These are going directly to the account and we're going to use the project field to, to assign it to project number four. So what's this gonna do? Reduce the checking account uh, by the full amount of the 150. The other side is gonna go into these two expense accounts. And then I should be able to break out at least the income statement by project using the sort by customer uh, field. So let's go and save it and close it and check it out. Save it and close it. So now we've got the 150 showing up in our little income statement summary. It's gonna show up in our transactions area over here. So there we have that. And then we've got, and notice here, it has the expense form and it also has the billable uh, expenses. These are the things that are, pulling, are gonna pull into the invoice when we bill the client for the expenses that we had incurred. If I go to the tab to the right, then I can look at my balance sheet. And so there's our balance sheet. There's the 150. Notice it's not uh, breaking it out because the, the balance sheet side doesn't always break out perfectly by these. When we, when we use these items, it's gonna be breaking out by the line items we assigned it to, which are generally the income statement side. If I go to the income statement and run the report, let's run it by class, not by class, by uh, customer. By customer, there we have it. So now we've got our, our 100 and the 50 for the full 150 of costs that are assigned to project number four. Project number four looking similar to the sub customers in that it's tied to customer number four. So you got customer number four, then the project that's related to it, and then the total for customer number four. So like with the sub customers, this ends up in a very long report. If you have customers that aren't related to projects, then you can have a quite long report. But you could, of course, filter by project as well using your filtering option up top. And you can filter here by, uh, the, by the customer. And then you can pick you know, the project. I think this was the project. No, that's not the project we were doing. We're doing this project. You can filter that way. And then you can filter down. Uh, I'm gonna turn that filter off and bring it back out or you can run reports within here uh, by the projects we can say let's go back to the project four and then we can go to our project reports and then we, now we have our profitability report the most common report and there's our nice profitability report by project this is great but you, it's also quite nice. A lot of people just focus on this report, but you also want to see all of the projects together oftentimes so you can see how the projects kind of fit into the totals on your financial statements, which means you're going to have to run something like this profit and loss, which is a little bit more tedious because of all the customers that are going to be breaking out into it. Although you can filter it then if, if you were breaking something out by like class which is just the columns that are assigned classes and therefore is usually a little bit cleaner because it has less columns, you know, cluttering up everything oftentimes with the classes. Okay, so let's go back up and go back to the customers. Now, if I go to the first tab, then uh, let's go back to our project detail and we could pull that into an invoice. Now we could say, okay, now we're gonna invoice kind of as we're going here to the customer for the stuff that we bought for the project. So we can say, okay, I'm gonna pull that into an invoice. And notice I could pull the stuff in from the estimate now, or I could pull the stuff in from the billable items. I'm gonna pull it in from the billable items because I put a markup of that 30% markup here. And so now this is gonna be going to customer number four and that stuff pulled in to the invoice 
and there's the 195. Now it pulled it into the invoice and marked it up with a separate line item of the 30%. So what's this gonna do? Invoice increases $195, accounts receivable. The other side's gonna be going to uh, to the line item that the, that the system's gonna pick, which are gonna be the billable kind of income line item because I did not use items to assign exactly the income statement I want, the income statement account. So let's save it and close it. And just to check it out, we can see there it is, 195 minus the 150, 45 profit. If I go to my balance sheet and run it by customer now, the, the, the accounts receivable isn't breaking out here by customer, but on the income statement, it should. So if I run it on the income statement, then I've got my income up top for project number four, which is tied to customer number four, minus the cost of goods sold. And I can see that in conjunction with all the other projects for the month of April, which I don't have any, not much else going on, but I wanna be able to tie it out to the, to the total income on the right-hand side is the point. All right, let's do another one over here. Let's say, let's go back on over and let's, let's go back and make another project, project number five, just so we can see a couple of them together. New project, project number five. And we're gonna make this connected to customer number five. Start date, I'm just gonna say the, the beginning of the year and it's in progress. So we'll save it. And then it takes me into project number five. So if I go back to my projects, now I can see all the open projects here. I can go into project number five. And we could do a similar thing, but this time I'll use items when I assign the costs. So I'm gonna say we could make an estimate for project number five, and there's the estimate. And then I can say, okay, we have labor of, let's say, uh, let's say 5,000 this time. And then materials, materials of 4,000. And there's our total estimate, boom. We'll say save it and close it. Nothing actual happens to the financial statements, but I see that in my transaction detail report. Then I'm gonna put in some costs. So let's put in some expenses, generically going to vendor number two. And let's say this happens on four or five. I'm gonna close these out this time. I'm not gonna use the category field, but this time the item field. The items allow me to have a little bit more flexibility when I pull the billable items into the invoice. So I can say, okay, labor on the item, let's say was 1000 so far. I'm gonna make it billable and then go into project number five. And then over here, I'm gonna say we want materials. And <clears throat> let's say it's for uh, 700 billable and it's pulling into project number five. Now, sometimes like this field kind of disappears, but it's still there. Uh, I think it's like if, I, if I'm too zoomed in or something, sometimes it kind of disappears when I go off of it, but it's still there, I believe. And we could double check it. That can get a little kind of irritating that it kind of there's like a phantom field there but it's still there <laughs> so if i record this what's going to do it's going to decrease the checking account uh by the 1700 the other side's going to go to the expense forms which are driven by the items now which are pointing to the cost of goods sold forms and i'll be able to pull it over to the invoice so let's save it and close it and so now we can see our costs and our profit and loss little summary here tab to the right run it doesn't really break it out on the balance sheet but if i go to the income statement and run it now we've got customer number five and the project related to customer number five now notice the last time when i pulled it into the income account it made it up its own account of billable expenses this time it's going to go to the account i assign which is product income because i used items to to pull it over so i'm going to go back on over let's make our invoice and for so now i'm going to pull in those billable items similar to what we did last time but this time we used items in conjunction with it so it looks much the same but now i'm now these items are, are going to tell when i set up the items which i did in the prior presentation i told it to to point to a um, 
an income account. And so QuickBooks won't just make up an income account. It'll use the income account we want. It still makes up an income account for the markup, however. This is going to increase accounts receivable by 2210. Other side going to the income account that we assigned it to go to. Save it and close it to it with the items. We assigned it with the items. There's our income minus the cost. There's our gross profit. Let's just go to the PL and uh, run it. So now we've got our, our project here. And notice it didn't just make up a billable expense account, but it went into the sales of product income. So we have more control when we use the items, although it's a little bit, a little bit more of an added step, but it's probably the, the way to go. So there's, there's the general concept with the items. Uh, it, I mean, the projects, if I was to increase this and go out to 053123, then we can see the similarities with the customers because I had my customers and sub customers out here. I think actually I had to go all the way out to 2025 is where we used our sub customer, but you can see the similarities. We've got the customers, the sub customers, and then the total customer sub customer. And then the total similarities with the projects, the projects are different, but you have a similar structure in that you've got the customer, the project, and then the total. Now, again, it's possible to have a customer and then a sub customer and connect the project to the sub customer uh, in, in that kind of uh, layered type of fashion. But these reports are fundamentally a little different than the class tracking reports where you would have you're just breaking things out by class as you assign the classes they are not assigned to the customer. Now, you could if I right click on this again and duplicate the reports. And I go down to the reports on the left hand side and I look up just project reports, project reports. You've got this project profitability summary, and that gives you like kind of like an income statement, but it's, it's quite condensed of the profitability for, for uh, each, each of the projects. So the customer income. Uh, expenses so the project here and then the customer income and expenses and then you can filter these reports by what is in progress and so on so i can go to my filters and i can filter by project status uh here which is a common filter whether it be in progress or complete or so on now note that you might start thinking well look this this is going to be ridiculous after i have like 100 customers because if i run a report like this one it's going to be massively wide. It's going to go on for a mile, but that's not generally the case because it's only going to show the activity on the income statement reports for the customers that have activity for the time range that you are working on. So it's not likely that you're going to be working on, you know, well, it depends on, you know, millions of projects in a year, right? So if you're running a years long project report, it's going to run the projects that you had that were running for that year. And then again, you can, you may be able to further filter down the projects by the project status. Okay. So the other kind of big thing that the projects have over like the sub customers and even the use of the classes and stuff in some ways is the integration with the payroll. So we, we turn, if you can, if you don't have payroll on in your 30 day practice trial, you might be able to turn a, like a 30 day payroll practice on to play with the payroll items because that has some differences within it too. So we saw before that if I have payroll on, I can go to my cog up top and I can go to my payroll settings over here. And if I go down to my payroll settings in the accounting, I have the ability to assign uh, like a class to it. So the class tracking has the ability to assign uh, an employee to a particular class, but I don't have that same thing with the projects. And even if I did, it wouldn't really work because I don't really assign one particular employee to a project. What I want to be able to do is assign their particular hours, the time they spent to a particular project. And of course, payroll gets complex because you not only have the payroll cost, but also the, the payroll taxes and stuff that ideally you would like to be able to, to tie out to the projects. So you can't do that, although, but even if you could, it wouldn't be the ideal thing for projects, usually as the projects are generally used. So, but if you have hourly employees, then you, you may be able to assign the hours to the project, but you have to use the timesheets to do that. 
So if you if you're running payroll within QuickBooks for hourly employees that you're tracking the time, then you can use the, the weekly timesheets to assign out the time. And that's one way that they can assign it to the projects, which is pretty, which is pretty neat. Uh, that's a cool thing. But if they're salaried employees, you can't do that so much. And, uh, and so there, there might be another workaround. You could try to do like a journal entry kind of format in a similar fashion that we, we saw with the, the class tracking. So maybe we'll take a look at that. But let's just check it out. I'm just gonna, I've got my one employee set up. I just set up a generic employee. And so let's set up a weekly timesheet and see how we can pull this into the project. So I'm gonna say that this is gonna be, there's my one employee up top. Let's say she's working sometime in the month, early in the month here that I'm working on, uh, April. And we're gonna say that this is gonna be for project here. There's the project. And then we got the select payment item select uh, regular pay and then I'm going to assign it to my my labor is the item uh, class I'm not going to assign a class it's going to be labor now notice it gets a little bit confusing because down here you're going to say well it's billable what does that mean that means that you're going to you're going to make it as a billable item in a similar fashion as we did to the expense pulling it into an income statement with this item here but also what we want to do is when we pay the employee, we want to assign their expenses to, to the job, to the project, the project job. <laughs> so there are two different things. So the billable item is usually going to be the marked up item that you're going to add to the invoice. So we might have a different billable rate, of course, than the actual expenses that are going to be generated when we process the payroll for our employee, which will be assigned to the job. All right, so let's do it. Let's say let's, there's 10 hours here. Let's well, let's do it. Let's do, I think 30 hours. Let's do 30 hours here assigned to that particular project. All right, let's save it and close it. Now I'm going to go back up to the projects. It shouldn't have assigned any of the payroll yet, but it should have like that billable item. I think I put it into project four, I believe. And so if I go into my transactions, then I should have a billable item for the time here we here we see it and if i if i go to my time tracking there's the time tracking information from my employee and if i was to uh, add an invoice we won't actually add it but if i was to do an invoice we can see that billable item is popping up for me to pull it in based on not the actual payroll that was processed but the billable item now if i process payroll going into the payroll here and then actually process it. I'm going to run payroll, run it, run in. And let's say that we're going to do it for some time in April. Let's say the beginning here. Let's do there. And then let's say it was for uh, 30. All right, I got the right period here. She, it's, it was April 2nd that I put the time in. So there it is. And let's pay, let's make the payment date sometime uh, in April as well. So we'll say April 15th. All right. So the 30 hours is then pulling in here. It's going to calculate the pay. Let's say uh, preview and I'm just going to run it, submit and boom. Okay. QuickBooks made me adjust the pay date uh, here. So I'm going to pull it as of May. But in any case, if I go back on over to our report and I'm going to bring it up uh, to May 3rd and run it. Then we've got our payroll item for customer number four that was broken out. So you can see it broke out both the taxes and the payroll for that time frame, uh, which is quite nice. That's a good deal. So, so that works well again, but only for like hourly employees. If you're processing payroll within the QuickBooks system, if, if not, then you could try to just process payroll, you know, as, as easily as possible, make payroll easy, and then basically do a journal entry that would assign the payroll per class. So for example, if you had, you know, payroll expense over here at like a thousand dollars that was unassigned to a specific job, it was just over here in payroll expenses then maybe you could do a journal entry 
that's gonna basically assign it to a project. So let's go to the first tab and I'm just gonna go to the plus button and let's make a journal entry and I'll make it as a four or five, that's good. And I'm gonna make up another account that's gonna be called wages for by job, by job or project. Wages by project. And I'm gonna say it's gonna be an expense type of account. And I'll just say it's gonna be an other, other business expense, wages by project, saving it. And then I'm just gonna say, if there was $1,000 that I need to reallocate, I would put say $1,000 credit, decreasing it. The name is gonna be unnamed first cause it wasn't allocated to a job. And then I'm gonna put it into wages by job, wages by project of a thousand and assign it to project number, what did I say, four is what we were working on. So notice it's the, it's the, it's the same account here. I'm not gonna put it to the actual wages account itself cause I don't wanna mess with that. I want that to tie out to the payroll and be able to look at the detail and not have any other stuff with it. But I'll use another account, a clearing account to reassign between the columns if I can to the proper customer. So let's, let's try that and save it. And then if I go to my reports, I can see here that I've got my, my project four where I have this wages by project down here. And then I've got the decrease to the non-specified item, something that's not specified to a job. So in other words, if I had my payroll that was going to wages over here for a thousand dollars and I wanted to reallocate it to job number four, I can do it with a journal entry, but I'm not going to reduce wages itself. I'm going to net out the wages account with this other account so that I don't, so that I don't have any detail in this wages account that's going to confuse my payroll just for payroll reporting purposes. I can tie out to this number, but I should have an equal and opposite number over here, which would then allocate it to the proper projects that we want to do. And that's not too tedious of a task, you know, you know to do, uh, to do. Now notice that projects also kind of advertise their little payroll calculator over here. So if you go into projects and they'll say, well, if you don't process payroll, you can use this payroll, uh, employee rate calculator up top. And so you can do that. I can, I can set up my employee use the calculator and it calculates the proper payroll taxes and everything that I would apply to the job. But the problem is like, if I apply this calculation to the project, it's only a, it's an internal calculation to the project. I Meaning it only affects this field. It's not really an actual journal entry. It's not going to be reflected on the income statement because if it were, you would have basically run payroll twice. So, it's kind of, that might be useful for internal reporting for the project itself, but ideally you'd like your, most of the time you'd like your full income statement over here to be, re be reflecting actual payroll that would be broken out by the actual projects. So I don't find that tool, I find that tool to be possibly helpful in some cases, but I think it's a little bit misleading in the indication that on how it might work best. Cause I think, you know, uh, it runs into problems because you're, you're not actually posting the transaction to the financial statements. So when you're trying to tie out to the financials, you know, that's what you would typically want to do, I would think. So I don't, so you have that tool, but, but again, I would think the other methods might be a better way to go uh, with the payroll. So that's the general idea with the projects.